lists and authorizations and certifications, it's all fine. You know? But what I've always said is the thing you have 
the day you are certified that you did not have the day before, is you now have something that can be taken away. And it's becoming apparent. You can be put on a list, you can be taken off of a list. But as Dima poignantly pointed out, the paper can't teach the class. I always said the greatest authorization, the greatest certification of one's is one's ability to teach a class. It is the quality of the classes you teach that give you the honor to teach. And there are people with papers that are terrible teachers and people with papers that are good teachers. But if you take the paper away from them, they're not going to step in front of class and go, egg them up. And they can't speak, you know? So I think it's it's okay. And I, I was there at the Yoga Journal conference years ago. I don't know. But um, it was when Yoga Alliance came before the teachers and made this presentation. This was outside the Ashtanga system, right? This was just in general. They said, we've got this great idea. <coughs> we want to start this yoga certification thing, yeah? And with, almost without exception, every teacher in the room said, that is a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah? Because this is a new phenomenon in the world of yoga, yeah? This idea of you've got a, a certification. And if you think about it, in a way, tell me if I'm talking to you. Okay. In a way, can we truly say that someone is certified in teaching yoga? I think we could have certified asana therapists, which would be CAPS, C -A -P, <laughs> or registered asana therapists. <laughs> but is yoga physical therapy? You understand? Can you certify someone teaching yoga? Can you imagine the yoga university, two graduate students talking? Um, hey, Richard. What are you going to major in? I was thinking of majoring in non greed, but there's really no material future in that. So. <laughs> Going for truthfulness. <laughs> Can you certify someone in, in Svadhyaya and non greed? And these are qualities of yoga that are uncertifiable. Yeah? And so the teaching of yoga, it's beyond physical therapy. You have to teach from your heart and accept that as a teacher, not everyone's going to like you, whether you're certified or not. So it's important to kind of get beyond it. And it's okay. And, and talking about a, a lineage, when did Parampara become a bloodline? The Tapi Joyce was the student of Krishnamacharya. His teacher was alive and we were studying with him. He didn't say, don't study with me, go study with Krishnamacharya. If it was a bloodline, Shrat, I'm just going to say Shrat for the one story. He would be sending everyone to Kastel and Jessica Charles, right? That would be the bloodline. When did it have to be a bloodline? Teacher, student, teacher, student, teacher, student, parampara. Yeah. Now, all of us up here love the Tapi Joyce. We love this lineage. When Guruji was alive, if you went to class one day with him, the next day you went to class with Manji his wonderful son. The next day you went to class with his daughter Saraswati. The next day you went to class with his grandson Sharat. And the next day you went to class with his granddaughter Sharmila. You would come back and say you just had five different experiences. Is it odd that each of us that love this system, appreciate this system, and have dedicated ourselves to it are a little different? It does not mean the lineage is not represented. Lineage is also an organic thing. There's an integrity, a beauty, an energy, and a relationship. And so the list, who cares? Yeah. Thank you.
are so I definitely not getting this business. Oh. This uh, celebratory occasion. The truth is that you've been on this list for a considerable amount of time, and we believe you're on this list because you had a dedication to the practice and it was recognized by the review. Then it did mean something, and it does mean something. Of course it does. And then in the moment when all of a sudden you disappear from that, your heart breaks a little bit. That's the truth, of course. Because you think, oh my God, you know, what have I done? What have I done to my longer really acknowledged for the dedication? And you know, like all things in life that make you question, then you have to look to yourself. And that's when you come to the appreciation that that this does not represent, particularly in this situation, because it is the Guru who gave us recognition through our studies. And you know, just some clumsy moment where she wrote to away and then back again. But of course, of course it matters. Of course we feel about it, but we have to and we you know we have to give it perspective. A teacher requires three things. A teacher requires firstly a teacher. And secondly to practice. And thirdly to care about people. Not four things. Not a place on this. So I practice with that. <clears throat> so, um, and it seems to me that there's a couple of things that have been going on here. Um, and I'm doing you the victory to make my assumptions about what might be going on underneath what we see at first. Um, so some years ago we had the Shanghai Yoga Research Institute with one head, and that was Patel Joyce. And if you would go there for Christmas, you would see Manju there too, you would see Sharad there too, you would see Shamila there too, and Saraswati there too, all in the shower at the same time, just like Dave was talking about. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, Guruji passed, bless his soul, and um, in the process of getting to there, as far as I can see, um, Guruji, he grew and he trained and he installed Sharad to be the head of the institute in Mysore, in India. So uh, Sharad took that over, and he ran that for a while. And um, in the process of that, a new organization was created, a new name was put on this uh, organization, it was KBJYI, Krishna Patabi Joyce, which I really went to, as a homage to Patabi Joyce, to book. And, and I don't know if I'm correct here, but in this umbrella, we had Sharad as Guruji's head, we had Manju, we had Shamila, and we had Saraswati also working under this umbrella. Now, uh, it, it's not me, no, no. I'm oh. independent. <laughs> <laughs> It seems at this moment um, the family is not quite in agreement about how to pursue what uh, is the legacy of Ashtanga Yoga, what is the good method of teaching Ashtanga Yoga. So they are, or maybe Sharad is deciding to move out from under the umbrella. And currently that's called rsharadchoice.com. And in that process, he is. Uh, going his own way, as far as I can see, and he is taking the list with him. That list that was before Gordon's list, he's taking that with him. Um, now, it wouldn't be right, as far as I can see, to put Manju on Sharad's list. That just wouldn't be right. He gotta have to do something like about that. The same thing with Richard and Dina, he cannot claim these people as his students. These are Gordon's students. So there is something that needs to happen with that. There. Now, Dina used a word which I would agree very much with, and that was clumsy. And I think that Sharad is not very interested in a Western sense of management. But for us, uh, Westerners, we would all, of course, hope that he would have taken the three-day course at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> some communication that would have been so much 
more comfortable with you. <laughs> so the month that went by, from all these people disappeared, I was super happy because I was going to be the only one. <laughs> So that month, when these heroes of mine, these knights of the round table, they were taken off that list, I had a very painful month, and I'm sure some of you had that too. And I was not quite sure what was going to happen to my own dedication in that regard. Mm -hmm. But luckily, Sharad has turned around and he's made the honorary list, which is maybe even better than the old list. Right? <laughs> so now I feel a little demoted. <laughs> But by the end of the day, we now have this list, and we have a new institution that's called AsharatJoyce.com. To <laughs> <laughs> see what's going to go on with that, and I don't have an answer. And I, as far as I can see, we are in progress. We are coming out of KPJ AYI. That was a phase. What's going to be next? Um, maybe your case is as good as mine. But let's see what it is. Let's have some patience. And see what happens. But I want to continue with the conversation. Uh, Thank you, Kim. I see, Sharad actually is not a literary, she's not belongs to Joyce Band at all. Mm -hmm. In India, the daughter has a grandson. He belongs to a different family. You see, he's not Joyce Band. Joyce Family is. I am the Jewish family, the daughter is the Jewish family. So the rest don't understand. So he took the name Joyce mm -hmm. and he wanted to wear everything. So he wanted everything to smell it like that's why he's promoting himself. It's okay by me, you know. It's kind of a little awkward for the Jewish family on the screen. And then all these people they dedicated to my father and all these people actually they don't need to be in this list. They're already in my father's list. They are blessed by from our father. David Sons of David Dolman, be on the list. You know, he's been great. So I think the list is kind of a joke, actually. Uh, you should stop forgetting about the list and get on with your life. Everybody's doing great. I am out of the list, I'm working on my list. I just carry on what my father taught me. I truly believe in that one. Because I was excited with what my father was doing, getting excited. And then I got you know, inspired from my father that I want to keep it the way it is. That's what I start doing that, but I don't belong in the KPJ or my wife or my wife. I am independent, I go around, and then some people like me, some people I know myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, they don't love themselves. You see, that's, they don't love themselves, they can't love anybody. The yoga is all about love, sharing and giving, enjoying. It does not pay, they're not really practicing yoga. You see, this is just an effort to be able to realize that. All these ways, all these uh, very important, uh, you know, places to start their own groups and everything. It's just not yoga. Yoga is, it has to be a vocal universe. You know, that was I truly believe in. It's so, uh, it doesn't matter, you know. Just be better off the list. Because if you are in the list, they know who you are. <laughs> or 
participated in, is that they'll start chanting, you know, like for, you know, with, uh, with Tavi Joyce, we, we say, Narayanam Padmapuram Vasishtam Shakti And so it's going back to Narayan, Vishnu, and he's actually the, the origin with no origin, because he is actually the present moment. He's the self of the self. And then from him, there was the lotus born of Brahma. And, and, and then Vasishta. Um, and so Vasishta is in our lineage. Vasishta is the, uh, was the guru of Brahma. And he was a very clever uh, master of yoga. So I consider him my, one of my gurus. And, uh, but there are so many people in India that love Vasishta. You would too. If you could read. There's a book he wrote called Yoga Vasishta. You've got to read that. <laughs> it, it's crazy. It's like stories inside of stories inside of stories with the greatest sense of humor you know, in, in the universe. And then it's almost like, you know, in that with living organisms, you know, what's my lineage? Okay. And you know, hopefully, if there's no incest in your immediate. Uh, family history. Um, there's always a re -com a combining of this family lineage with that guy, with that, and and so you know, Tavi Joyce is you know from Krishnamacharya, who was you know a brilliant, uh, radiant guy. Krishnamacharya, uh, Ramana Mohan Brahmacharya, was, his te that was one of his teachers. He had a number of teachers, but then. The, Tavi Joyce's family lineage was the uh, Sri Vidya school, you know, of Shankaracharya, uh, which is an amazingly rich lineage. So all of the, the teachers in that lineage, all the way back to Gautapan and further back to Vasishtha and Brahma, they're all part of our lineage. And, and so it's, and this gives a richness because if you, you know, you one day you you know you, you can't deal with one of the people and you just go back another generation. <laughs> <laughs> it's like with your grandparents. You, know, you have an easy relationship with your grandparents because they they've seen it all. While your own mother and father might be a little bit crazy. <laughs> 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 and so this diversity, you know, it's like genetic. It's healthy. Um, and, and so none of us really, you know, will study with exactly just one teacher. You know, we have one primary teacher, because that helps keep everything in order. But you have a diversity of, you know, Siksha gurus, those who give you good advice and instruction or inspire you. It could be somebody you meet uh, in, in an alley. In some <laughs> wow. I met sadhus in India, you know, in, in between ashrams, you know, just some old guy. You know, look into each other's eyes and everything just disappeared. <laughs> Oh God! Or their email. <laughs> and, and so we have, you know, all these resources, and they don't really conflict with each other, though their their languaging is different. You know, I, um, you know, like like Mr. Eingard's languaging is very different than there's a whole other political um, phenomenon around him, you know. and, and then. Uh, Deshikara, uh, Krishnamacharya's son, you know, I got to study a little bit with him. Um, but I didn't find conflict. I found like, wow, that's really cool information. Uh, you translate back and forth. And so that's what lineage is. It, it requires you know, a multitude. And a huge thing in, in any culture was, oh, well, here's a list of the, you know, part of our lineage, and they'll do like 80 people, okay, the early Upanishads. Oh, here's a lineage change. That goes on page after page. Um, pretty interesting. 
It gives you a sense of like culture, tradition. <laughs> and just a two second thing here. <laughs> what everybody up here is saying in part is that it is so rich to have a lineage. We are so lucky to have a lineage, and if we become myopic and look just at our whether we are holding our right hand with our our right wrist with our left hand and whether that's the most important thing or the experience of what this lineage actually represents is actually the important thing. Uh, you know, we need to start paying attention to that. That there are and, and to realize that in the modern age one of the problems we run into is a, in the West is a disregard for um, for lineage, for elders, for experience, and wanting something new and not wanting to go in deeply, not wanting to have things be messy sometimes, and always wanting them to be glittery. And so with lineage, you really have a, a capacity to mature, and you have the capacity to get grounded and, and you have the responsibility to, uh, to practice so that you can see what is truthful in the particular moment. Um, because with lineage, when you have, say, thousands of different uh, lineage holders, you get the capacity to have uh, many perspectives. And the the problem that we run into in the modern age is that people don't like this perspective, so they ignore it and and just want their own perspective, like with our news channels. I just want to watch the ones that support what I believe in or really. And so with yoga, just like within the asana, we have action, counteraction, inhale, exhale, the complementary opposites like David and Richard were talking about yesterday. Yeah, and and so we and as a practitioner, you assimilate that, and you you become more capable of uh, of the direct experience of whatever it is that's arising right now. And the lineage of the yoga is to help us be more clear in our perception. So all of this that there, that others have said so eloquently to me is also when you bring it into the modern world, it starts to be a responsibility to wake up a little bit. Thank you. 
yours is wrong, mine is right, mine is wrong, yours is right, it's better than me. None of that. We just we do the best we can. Every single teacher will try to present the very best that they can according to their understanding. Just because two are different, they can make one right or one wrong. It's something that I would just, you know, a lineage maybe it doesn't have to be a straight line. Maybe we could wrap it around. Keep us together. his first trip here, that's the day I met Marty. We've known each other 43 years. Yeah. So we're talking about this. We don't spell lineage, L-I-S-T. Yeah. Lineage is something more than that. And, and to suddenly go, oh, those people before didn't matter, that's not a lineage. A lineage doesn't mean you take your eraser and erase everything that was before that and say now, the lineage starts from here, <coughs> On this new date, this is the lineage. It doesn't work. You can do that, but it's not real. It does not diminish the knowledge that people have. And it's cheating of the system to think otherwise, yeah? To say that this person's right, that one's wrong. This is the problem with the world. It's a problem with politics. It's a problem with all of it, right? People want it's got to be this way or that way. Yeah, the, the diversity is good, you know? And I met Sherlock in 1977, yeah? He was seven years old. Yeah. I like Sherlock. I mean, I thought, I say in the world of Sherlock, I'm Switzerland. I try to be neutral as much as possible, but I also have an opinion. Yeah? I like to express myself, but I, I, people do what they do, yeah? Uh, but this comes back to really how important this list. You can see it can change, right? There's this, there's that. Lineage doesn't mean a website, also, you know? <laughs> so, I remember, this is a personal story, but I, but I think that this is, every one of us up here would have some sort of experience like this that to me is the, the true sort of authorization or something. It's a personal connection. So it was Guruji's 92nd birthday, you know? And he was, upstairs in the house, and he says, there did you come? So I went with him to his bedroom, and he went into his closet, and he got a silk cord top. He, he came out with a silk cord top, a shirt that, that uh, men wanted in him. And he says, you, my birthday, you wearing? <laughs> However, before he handed it to me, he went like this. You not forgetting me. Yeah? That's all I need to know. <laughs> we should not forget people that walk the path before us. We should not diminish the experience others had, even if it's different than our own. We should not attempt to somehow diminish, negate, or ignore the fact that there are people who dedicated their lives for decades to this. And even if their opinion is a little different, great. You know, be a thinking person, experience them all, and then just do their practice. Man, if we, as yoga people, we can't get along even within the same kind of yoga, what chances are of helping the world? We can't make them free on your toes or punch your foot. I mean, how are we going to save the world if we can't even, you know, give them little things? <laughs> Thank you, 
Constitution. Right. You, you sure you don't want to tell me again? Texas, we just talk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I think we've got a